Sonic the Hedgehog, one of the most iconic video game characters and franchises to exist. Having been around since the 90s, the Blue Hedgehog has had quite a few ups and downs with his own games. And you can tell I had quite a history when it came to the Sonic series, from when I was a kid to now as an adult. However, despite me being the massive fan during my childhood, I did not see much of what the franchise had, as I was quite shy of most things, with a few exceptions. And yet, as of today, I am more exposed to the franchise like everyone else, like buying some of the merch and even playing some of the games. And there's especially some upcoming content that's coming out that I'm looking forward to, such as the DLC of Sonic Frontiers, the second season of Sonic Prime, and Sonic Superstars, which I'm not really that excited, but I'll just have it for Christmas anyway. Now, I'm gonna be telling you my viewers when did I become exposed to the Sonic franchise and what were some of the games that I played throughout my life. So, buckle up as this video might definitely be the big one on my channel yet. But seeing how my last video was about 30 minutes long, I think that this video here could break the record I suppose. Without further ado, let's go to the beginning. Now, this video is only focused on me talking about the video games I've played and not some other forms of media, like the cartoons, the comics, and even the movies. But I'll just let them slip in and briefly explain them. Anyway, I have my very few first experiences to the Sonic franchise, as I don't know which one was the most prominent. There was a cartoon on a French channel by the name of TF1, where it had a pack of three hedgehogs in a band, using their instruments to fight against this fat-looking man with black eyes, red pupils, and a big moustache. I first watched it on a VHS tape that was on a block that had an episode of the tweenies on it. And the tape was all in black and white, as it was originally recorded on a French video recorder, and if a tape is played on, say, a PAL VCR in Britain, all of the colour would be lost, and it also applied to some of the VHSs from France. Regardless, I didn't stumble upon this cartoon again until 2006, when it was on CITV, during the Action Station slot. I already learned the name Sonic as I remember hearing the announcer say the name of a character back in the tape I just watched. Of course, I later found out that the name of a cartoon was Sonic Underground, where it had Sonic having siblings named Manic and Sonia, and that he had a mother, where along with his brother and sister have this quest to find her. But spoiler alert, they never do. And the animation? Yep. It's what you expect from seeing it. However, there was also another cartoon starring the Blue Hedgehog. If you don't know, I have an old friend of mine named Sean Davis who had cable television in his house so his family can watch channels that are available through satellite television. My family didn't have anything like that as we only got Freeview, where it has channels that are free to watch. One of the channels that Sean had on cable television was Jetix. I mean, who else doesn't remember that? As I was saying earlier, one of the shows playing on the channel was about a blue hedgehog named Sonic. Some of his friends I can remember include a pink hedgehog, a young female rabbit with a blue little creature accompanying her, and a human boy. Because who wouldn't like to have him as part of a main cast of animals? Alongside them, there are also characters like a sexy looking bat, a black hedgehog who looks like Sonic, where I remember this one episode where Sonic fights him and I thought that he was called Sonic, because my brain cell told me that there were two hedgehog characters that are named Sonic and that I didn't understand English back then. And lastly, the fat scientist who is Sonic's enemy, whom this incarnation didn't tell me was a different one from the Underground cartoon. Plus, there were McDonald's Happy Meal toys released in both the UK and France. In the UK, 
there were these handheld games that each had characters playing sports. One had Sonic on a skateboard, one had the Black Hedgehog, whom I'll name later in the video, playing basketball, and the one I've got was where the Pink Hedgehog and the Sexy Bat from the Jetix show playing tennis together. And I remember that I put it in the back of the driver's seat in the pocket in my old car, whom my family nicknamed Galaxy, as it has the logo on it. As for France, McDonald's made two fighting top toys of Sonic and the Black Hedgehog, released alongside some Puka products for the girls. Now, as for what was the first Sonic video game I've experienced, it goes as far back as 2005 from what I can remember. Usually back from 2004 to 2006, every summer, my family would go to Perosquirec in France for the holidays and we would stop at a pub by the name of Brewer's Fair. The pub had a play area for children to play there, as this was what me and my sister liked about Brewer's Fair. As the play area had many cool things, like the slides, the food and what not, there was one thing that caught a bit of my attention and that was a strange looking computer. The computer acted like some sort of arcade cabinet and had four buttons. That's just how I can recall as I can't remember what it looked like. On the screen was a game, as it had the blue hedgehog Sonic, who I didn't recognize before seeing those cartoons, and that he was in a green and hilly area, standing next to a bridge. So, my little kid self didn't have any video game skills, and I moved Sonic around, and I even tried to throw him off the bridge to see what would happen, but apparently that did nothing, as the bridge has some invisible barriers around it. And I didn't know that little me attempted to unintentionally kill Sonic as I thought he would swim in the water. Which I later found out was his weakness, mind you. But anyway, that game was Sonic 3D Blast, or as it was called in Europe, Sonic 3D Flicky's Island, as that game itself was a port of a Saturn version of a game that was originally released for the Sega Mega Drive. And 3D my back. Look how early the 3D graphics were compared to now! I mean, it was the 90s and video games have been experiencing what 64-bit graphics would look like. The name Sonic stuck to my head and I asked my sister to type in on Google on my very old Windows XP. One of the results led to a game which I'm pretty sure you're all familiar with. <laughs> Yup, the one and only Sonic Flash game that everyone has played during their childhood. And while it's got three of the characters I already know, like Sonic himself, the little rabbit girl and the evil scientist, there are two characters that I'm not familiar as I don't remember seeing them in that Jetix show. A two-tailed fox and a red animal that I didn't know the name of until years later. The game had Sonic or whoever running around two levels in three acts each, jumping on some bad guys, speeding in some loop-de-loops, jumping on some springs, and a third act where Sonic fights off the evil scientist. Of course, the second level had the boss being so difficult that Little Me couldn't successfully beat the game. On that note, there was another Flash game featuring the Blue Hedgehog that I remember playing, and it's this one. It had Sonic running around a grassy area with palm trees with incredible speed, jumping on enemies just until he encounters his main foe. Unlike the other one, it strangely lacked any music and sound effects, even though there was only one which was the spring sound when Sonic jumps on a brown bouncy platform. All of these two games I played were because of that show on Jetix, where it's got the protagonist named Sonic. So, a couple of years later and there were two new titles being released. One was Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games and the other, Sega Superstars Tennis. 
While the first title was my first time seeing Mario, I already knew who Sonic was, judging from the stuff I saw and as for the other, yep, it had Sonic in it. I remember seeing the adverts in France, as Sonic was probably popular in France with how many video games he got. In Super U, a French supermarket, I remember seeing the case of Sonic Rivals 2 on the PSP and in the media section, there was a screen having a preview menu of certain video games, such as Super Smash Bros. Brawl and Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. One of them was obviously Sega Superstars Tennis, where it showcased some of the characters that were in the game. I didn't know any of their names except for Sonic. It wouldn't be until when my sister had a Nintendo DS of her own and her first game was, you guessed it, this. By pure coincidence, one of the games that my sister picked was the one where Sonic and some other characters play tennis, as she was probably more familiar with those Flash games we played on the computer. Anyway, let's talk about what this game is about. Sega Superstars Tennis on the DS is a crossover game where it's got characters from Sega playing tennis with the likes of Sonic, of course, Super Monkey Ball, Knight, Space Channel 5, and Jet Set Radio. There are courts that are representing each franchise, each having their own theme, from a green area with ancient parts, totem poles and palm trees, a court with patterned colours, a city with boomboxes next to the net, a space station with neon lights, a temple area filled with water, to a Mexican town with some cacti next to the court. Of course, I couldn't forget that I learned the names of the characters, specifically the Sonic ones. They're Sonic, naturally, Tails, the two-tailed fox from the Flash game, Amy, the pink hedgehog from the Jetix show, Dr. Eggman, the evil scientist who's seen as Sonic's nemesis and as for others, they really aren't as important as they're from other franchises, like I.I. from Super Monkey Ball, Ooh la la and Pudding from Space Channel 5, Amigo from Samba de Amigo, Knights and Riala from Knights into Dreams, and Beats from Jet Set Radio. The game has you play in single matches with only one character or in doubles matches where you have a partner beside you. There's a tournament mode, though sometimes me and my sister would lose in that mode and mini games to play, one of which you fight off a horde of zombies with your tennis ball! I don't know who allowed this, but it seemed like a cool concept, but at the same time, I found it a bit scary and hard, considering that I couldn't beat the zombies and that I just had to watch my character be eaten by them. At least there's no blood, as that stage is from House of the Dead. It also has some special moves which has the character let out their trait when hitting the ball, one of them having Sonic transforming into a golden form of himself and makes the ball go in different directions. And that's all I have to say about this game, a first introduction to most of Sega's IPs and learning a few of Sonic's friends and enemy. Not the best game on the DS I've played, as there were others like LEGO Indiana Jones and Club Penguin Elite Penguin Force. When the buzz around that is the advertising of Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games, I searched up Mario and Sonic to see what videos there are. I clicked on one where it was a clip of Sonic, Mario and his green brother and the black hedgehog where my brother and I thought he might be also named Sonic but my sister denied it, facing off against a team of four turtles with ninja attire, clearly not the ninja turtles. The video then revealed to me that the name of the black hedgehog is actually Shadow when Sonic called his name out when the hedgehog went off to fight the turtles. It turned out that this clip was from a series called Super Mario Bros. Z by Alvin Earthworm. It's a shame that I didn't watch a lot of it when I was a kid, but I did see some clips like Sonic turning into Fire Sonic and later watching most of the episodes in 2014. It wouldn't be until Christmas of 2008, the same year that I experienced some of the recent Sonic stuff that I got a Nintendo Wii as one of the presents, and little did I know that it became one of the best presents I got in most Christmases. The games that came along with the console were Kung Fu Panda, the game that was based on the movie, Guinness World Records, the video game, Mario Kart Wii, and of course, 
Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games. This was my full exposure to the Sonic series, as well as the Mario series. It has Mario and Sonic competing in the 2008 Summer Olympics, even though they were over when I got this game, so it was too late to celebrate that event. It has two franchises taking part in the Olympic Games, participating in some events such as a 100 meter race, javelin throwing, fencing, aquatics, table tennis, gymnastics and many more. I already knew some of the names of the characters who have appeared in Sega Superstars Tennis like Tails, Amy and Eggman and Shadow from that YouTube video, but it also revealed what's the name of a red creature is and it's Knuckles. Not only that, but there are two new faces in this game that I've never heard of, like with Blaze and Vector. And of course, the Mario characters are there too, but this video's about Sonic anyway, so maybe in another time, I might talk about some of the Mario games I've played. I loved this game, even more so than my sister. We played it for hours, playing through the Olympic events and even unlocking the Dream events. My favourite character to play was Shadow, as I thought he had a cool design and that he is badass, as I saw him fight Sonic from the anime I'll not name until later and the Koopa Troopa Ninja Turtles in SMBZ. It wouldn't be until I looked up some Sonic stuff in the internet where I looked up into some videos and games. And you know that I'm just gonna list them all. First thing I saw was a music video of Sonic named Sonic, His World. It featured stuff like Sonic saving a human princess from Eggman, who looked weirdly realistic here, Shadow kicking some white hedgehog's butt, Blaze being there, that sexy bat from the Jetic show, and the three hedgehogs turning yellow. The song came from the game Sonic the Hedgehog, better known as Sonic 06 by many people as it was released in 2006. The only thing I can remember from the game prior is that I saw the game's cover, which told me that it's epic and all. And his world would eventually be my favourite Sonic song back in 2009, due to how it's fitted the feel of Sonic. Then, there were Flash games and movies such as Final Fantasy Sonic, Sonic Blocks, Nazo Unleashed, Sonic Shorts, Sonic Scene Creators, Tails and his GBA, Sonic X Chaotic Battle, Sonic Crackups, Tails Cosmic Rush, the list goes on. And besides those, there was a website that made me learn a whole lot about Sonic, and that was Sonic Retro. This place showed me who the characters were, what games there are, and I learned what the name of that cartoon on Jetix was called, and that was Sonic X. Plus, the website showed me some of the characters and even what their names are. Rouge the Bat, Silver the Hedgehog, Metal Sonic, the Chaotix, and even the super forms of the characters. Unfortunately, I didn't dive deep into any of the stuff, as I was very shy to even look at them. Although, I mostly remember seeing clips from Sonic 06, like the ending to Silver's story, and even some cutscenes from Sonic Unleashed, which was the recent game at the time, and... That's kinda it. I didn't watch any episodes of Sonic X, as I was too afraid to watch it again, as with a similar case with a Pokemon anime, mostly because I watched it first in French. But I mostly stuck to the Flash games and even some music videos on YouTube, especially the Sonic X ones. It was that this time I was also into things like Thomas and Club Penguin, as my 8 year old self was into these things and I wanted to see Sonic cross over with these two franchises. I even drew a lot of pictures of Sonic and him crossing over with Club Penguin, which I've already discussed in a video two years ago, so you might want to check that out. So at that time in 2009, there was a new Mario and Sonic game coming out called Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Winter Games, being a sequel to the one from the 2008 Olympics. I was thrilled to see that there's a sequel to the game that I loved playing on the Wii. Of course, I got the game for Christmas and I've got to say, I liked it more than the first. 
it has the Mario and Sonic characters once again participating in the 2010 Winter Olympics in Vancouver. It's not only added some new Mario characters like Donkey Kong and Bowser Jr., but also Silver and Metal Sonic, introducing my sister and brother to these two. And of course, much like the previous game, it's featured some Olympic events that have winter sports seen in the Winter Games. Ranging from the bobsleigh, which was my favourite, snowboarding, figure skating, curling and skiing. The Dream events returned and each of them represented the levels from both franchises. For example, Dream Ski Cross had Mario Circuit from Mario Kart Wii, whilst the Sonic ones had Seaside Hill, Radical Highway, the special stages from Sonic Heroes, and the Sonic routine of Dream Figure Skating has several of Sonic's places and even Perfect Chaos appearing. The game also had some songs from the Sonic series that I was already aware of and never heard of, such as Sonic Heroes, Escape from the City, and some other music from Sonic games. There was also a festival mode where it acts like an adventure mode as you play through some of the events and even face some of the rivals, with the likes of Omega, Jet, Rouge, and Eggman Nega. It's not what it sounds like to some people, so shut it. This had then became one of my favourite games on the Wii in my childhood, especially with the other likes of New Super Mario Bros. Wii and Super Mario Galaxy 2. Two thousand and ten came, and I was looking through some Sonic content online, such as with the Flash games and movies and all. What I discovered when looking on Google Images was I searched up Sonic and Amy kissing. As I can remember, Amy is seen to be such a fangirl towards Sonic that she wants to be his girlfriend and Sonic just doesn't want to, as I recall seeing several episodes of Sonic X when it aired on Jetix and later seeing some videos with footage from the anime and a bit of the games. These two being in love were to be a couple named Son Amy, a portmanteau of Sonic and Amy's names. And boy, you can tell it's still running to this day, as there's a fan base on YouTube and on DeviantArt. And I was temporarily one of those fanboys, if you didn't know. Of course, at the time, there was a new game that just came out, and that was Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing, and from what I heard, it's a predecessor of Sega Superstars Tennis, as it's got Sonic and other Sega characters racing in their carts, in a similar vein to Mario Kart. I didn't play the game, as I only saw the trailer, and that Knuckles, Big, and Metal Sonic have been added to the roster as playable characters. So, I just remember it existing, I guess. Then, it was announced that there would be a new Sonic game this year, and that was Sonic Colors. From what I've heard, it had Sonic teaming up with some aliens, and that he, Tails, and Eggman are the only characters to appear in the game. I didn't get around to see what the game was like, as I was less interested in Sonic, but I still showed some interest from time to time. Two thousand and eleven was the following year, and it was said to be the twentieth anniversary of the Blue Hedgehog. Along with it came an announcement of a game in the form of a trailer, where we see Sonic in his modern design meeting his classic self from the Mega Drive games. Earlier that year, my brother had bought a game that I didn't want to be close to, and that was this. At first, I didn't want to see what the game looked like because it had... Rouge the Bat. Because she looked so sexy that she got a fan base, and I just didn't want to hear from her. At least, that's what my 10 year old self thought. But the day after, I thought of giving the game, Sonic Riders Zero Gravity a go and saw the opening cutscene and thought it looked cool. The story had Sonic and his friends finding some bracelet-looking artifacts called the Ark of the Cosmos, and some Meteor Tech robots are on the loose trying to find them. Meanwhile, the Babylon Rogues, consisting of Jet, Wave and Storm, have found the stones that can control gravity and that Eggman's involved and he stole them and there's something about the Ark's forming a black hole and... 
Yeah, the story is really complex and confusing, and the Ark of the Cosmos were nothing more than these MacGuffin devices. So anyway, this game is what I thought of as the Sonic version of Mario Kart Wii. It had characters riding on hoverboards known as Extreme Gear, each having their own unique features and abilities. There's also the ability to use the Ark of the Cosmos to control gravity, and that move is known as Gravity Control. It can let you turn through corners by launching yourself in mid-air and even enter zero gravity by boosting from objects from the air. This was a pretty impressive technique for a racing game, I should note. There are even unlockable characters who aren't even seen in the story to begin with, particularly Shadow and Rouge, whom I accepted to see her in the game. So, as for Sonic's 20th anniversary, I celebrated it very late as I did some fan art on MS Paint. And a few games included in one of my drawings were Sonic and the Secret Rings and Sonic and the Black Knight, as Secret Rings was for some reason included in the 20th anniversary trailer, showing most of Sonic's titles over the years. Despite the fact it's a spin-off and that it mostly showcases Sonic's mainline games, including the then upcoming generations. But still, I did some drawings which I can't show you because my old Windows XP had gone away and that I didn't save any of the pictures. Poor me. Also, I shipped Knuckles and Rouge. So, Sonic Generations came out and I watched some of the cutscenes and prior to the game, Sonic sounded very different. His voice in some of the games I've played changed drastically to the one in Colors and Generations and I didn't know who voiced him. That was when I learned that Sonic was voiced by Roger Craig Smith and he replaced Jason Griffith, who first voiced him back in Sonic X. So, if you wanna hear how different Sonic's voice sounded, here's a comparison. What do you figure that was all about? The hair, and those arms, and, and look at the Chaos Emeralds! So, is this what you usually look like? Yeah, this is the real me. Pretty cool, huh? Is it me, or is that place we were just in awfully familiar? I'm no stranger than rescuing genies in magic books or saving aliens in an interstellar amusement park. I'm more concerned about finding our friends. So, with Sonic Generations, I thought it was a really cool concept. Sonic teaming up with his classic self to stop the evil being called the Time Eater, who can control all of time and space. Of course, most of Sonic's friends are there, especially Tails who had his classic self show up as well. We get Sonic travelling through past levels, ranging from the classic era, the Dreamcast era, to the modern era. And we also see some old bosses and rivals return, looking more detailed in 3D. I didn't mind it being the best Sonic game of all time, as I was more focused on playing the Flash games and doing some stuff on MS Paint. Of course, for Christmas, the third Mario and Sonic game was what I got and it had Mario and Sonic characters once again competing in the London 2012 Olympics and everyone was being hyped up about that event. But I'm not gonna talk about this game in depth like with the first two. The year 2012 came and a few things came out for Sonic, like Sonic 4 Episode 2, which was a sequel to Sonic 4 and... I had no opinions at the time, because my kid self didn't care about them. And there was a fan base that was suddenly new and people associated with Sonic himself. I'm of course talking about My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. In case you don't know, My Little Pony just had a truckload of fan-made stuff everywhere, on YouTube, DeviantArt, and maybe even Tumblr. And one of its fan bases had Sonic shipping with Rainbow Dash, because both of them are fast, blue, and have a cocky attitude. Plus, the ship by the name of Son Dash replaced Son Amy, as I thought Sonic pairing up with a pony was much cuter. There was even a group on DeviantArt dedicated to fan art with Sonic and MLP crossing over, and there's some art of Sonic and Rainbow Dash being together and... 
falling in love apparently. Other than that, there was news of a new Sonic racing game titled Sonic and All Stars Racing Transformed and that Sonic was going to appear in the Disney film Wreck-It Ralph, making his first appearance in an animated movie. So, after looking through some Son Dash fan art and learning about Sonic.exe, I never really had played a new Sonic game as I was still shy about it. It was then 2013, the following year, that I saw some things. For starters, I became interested in Super Smash Bros. Brawl, as it's got a huge cast of Nintendo characters in this adventure where they fight off some enemies, and it's got Bowser and Ganondorf being a part of this big subspace army, and later in the story, Sonic shows up to stop some evil figure named Taboo, having an epic climax to the story. Now, I was already aware of Sonic appearing in the game as I saw some screenshots of him in Brawl as seen in both the Mario and Sonic wikis. And I even made myself my own version of Smash Bros where some Sonic characters are in it, along with My Little Pony, Moshi Monsters, Club Penguin, Kids Next Door and other things, and it's a shame some concepts didn't come into fruition. Then it was announced that there would be a new Sonic title on both the Wii U and 3DS called Sonic Lost World, where it's got Sonic facing against his new adversaries, the Deadly Six, who look out of place for something like Sonic and I didn't even care, as I was focused on the fan content. And even as my 13 year old self was still into Sonic, there came a teaser for a new show coming out, showing the redesigns of Sonic, Tails, Knuckles and Amy, being titled Sonic Boom. And from one of the shadows alone, Knuckles looked pretty ripped and it was announced that the cartoon would air next year in 2014, where I went all out with that year. I watched some fan animation, specifically the sprite ones, did some fan art on Serif Draw Plus, and saw the first look of what Sonic Boom looked like, accompanied by two games, Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric and Shattered Crystal. Some more news dropped in like that Metal Sonic and Shadow are going to be in the games and plus, Boom takes place in a different universe so it seems like they're building a new world there. So, after watching several fan content, the two games came out and... The only things I can remember in Rise of Lyric was that Shadow was a boss and it ended off with a cliffhanger showing Metal Sonic being revived. That was all I watched. I also watched the first few episodes of a cartoon as I stopped because I just didn't feel any excitement as most stories were just... And of course... This was when I learned that there were some Sonic games that were panned due to how poorly they were made. Sonic 06 was obviously because of the glitches and other things. Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric was also packed with a lot of glitches and that some of the levels looked unfinished. The storybook games because... I don't know. It had Sonic in fantasy settings and one where he's wielding a sword! Isn't that cool or what?! But alas, I was pretty much still into Sonic, as I wanted to show my sister how amazing and badass the Blue Hedgehog is. He fights robots, some monsters, has a super form, and even made out with a human princess. Yeah, I didn't know what bestiality was back then. In 2015, there was some less Sonic content other than the mobile game Sonic Runners, and that a new Sonic Boom game on the 3DS titled Sonic Boom Fire and Ice was coming out later that year. I still mostly made some stuff on Serif's Draw Plus and Paint, and little did I become a bit interested in what there is in the franchise, the more open I was to seeing them. And on that note, I was given a Nintendo 3DS for my 15th birthday, as my DS no longer worked and that the 3DS was the predecessor of that handheld device. The two games that I got were Super Mario 3D Land and Sonic Generations, which looked drastically different on the console version. 
While it had Green Hill Zone and the rival fights intact, it had different levels and bosses, all having a 2.5D gameplay for modern Sonic. I didn't have a problem with it, as I thought it was okay. Did I mention that the story only had the modern and classic versions of Sonic, Tails and Eggman as the main characters? And aren't Shadow and Silver important to the story and, uh, forget it. They aren't as they have no relevance in both versions. And of course, there were some episodes of Sonic Boom showing that Metal Sonic and Shadow are gonna appear, and I thought that the show would take itself seriously for once. So, in December of that year, I began watching Sonic X for the very first time, as I'm now allowing myself to watch it. I watched some episodes up until the 10th as me and my family went over to Perolskarek for the Christmas holidays. 